I just finished adding this new feature to my side project. So I wanted to make a video so you could see at a high level how all these different components piece together. So we're back in my side project here and over on the account page, uh, we show the user's profile picture. You can see right here. And I basically want to let the user change their profile picture. So I'm gonna start by uh, pasting in a button here. And what I want this button to do is to bring up a modal when we click it. So uh, we're gonna come up here and create some new state from React called is showing picture form. Go ahead and import use state. And then down on our new button, we'll go ahead and say, when we click this, let's set is showing picture form to true. And then down here at the bottom, we'll say is showing picture form. Then we'll go ahead and render our picture form component. And uh, this doesn't exist. Let's go ahead and put this in a new file, pictureform.js. This will export a new component. And we're actually going to render the modal component that we worked on uh, in the last video. And that we can just import like that. So now if we come back to our account page, import the picture form, then if I come here and click edit, look at that, we got our shiny modal working just great. Now to close it, we wanna say on close equals set is showing picture form to false. And uh, we'll go ahead and pass this on close prop right on through to our modal. And now when we hit escape, we see uh, the modal disappears, but it doesn't quite work. That's because we need an animate presence wrapper around this since we're using frame or motion. And uh, now we should see animate in and animate out. Okay, let's pop over to our picture form here. And I'm gonna paste in uh, just some HTML here to get us going. So when we look at this, we'll see we have our header and this uh, choose photo button all ready for us to wire up. So this is just HTML and design. Let's actually work on the functionality. Now, first, we want this choose photo button to actually open uh, a file picker. And to handle file uploads, I'm actually using this library that gives me this use S3 upload hook. So I'm already using this for my profile picture, so it's already configured with my AWS credentials. But this hook, uh, use S3 upload, gives me a file input and an open file dialog. Basically lets me render a file input anywhere. Let's just drop it in right here. It's gonna be a hidden file input and then we get this uh, open file dialog function that we can attach to our button right here. On click, open file dialog. And now when we click our kind of custom button here, uh, we see a file picker. So those just make it easy to wire up our custom button here. But uh, now when we actually click on the button and choose a file, nothing happens. So we need to handle the actual file change event. And we can do that with on file change from this file input. So we'll say handle file change. And then we can come up and say function handle file change. This takes in a file. And for now, let's just put it into some new react state. So we'll call set file file right here. Go ahead and import that. And uh, now if we select a file, we have it in React State, but it's not actually doing anything for us. Uh, before we upload the file to S3, we wanna render it in our image cropper, which I have another series on me building, uh, so that we can let the user basically preview and crop their image before they upload it. So in order to preview a file that hasn't been uploaded yet, we need to turn it into a data URL so that we can pass it into a source of an image tag. And so we're gonna to wanna to do that right here when we handle this file change. We're gonna get a data URL from this little helper function called get data URL from file. And this is coming from uh, my image cropper component, but basically it takes in a file. We can see it is an async function, so we want to await it. We'll turn this into an async function. And then uh, let's go ahead and throw this into some state as well. Set file data URL to our data URL right here. And what's cool about this is now we can conditionally render this choose photo if we don't have a file data URL. But if we do, we can render an image tag that shows file data URL. So let's try choosing a photo. 
And just one little mistake, this should be called on change. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. And there you go, we can see we're rendering our image tag with our selected file uh, as a local preview here. But we don't actually want to render an image tag. We want to use our fancy image cropper, which we built in another series. That takes in a source and it also takes in an aspect ratio. And in our case, our profile picture is one by one. So we want to use an aspect ratio of one. And uh, now this is pretty neat. Look at that. Hot reload shows our image cropper and uh, all the cool effects from before are there. But now the user can crop their image. Now the profile picture is a circle. It'd be nice uh, if once we choose the file, we show a circle here. Let's just wrap this in rounded full overflow hidden. That looks nice. And uh, if I add another div and drop another button right here, we can see it's really easy to let the user basically choose a new file after they've already selected one if we want them to do that. So uh, this is just calling the same open file dialog function as before. But uh, now we're actually ready to use this cropped value that the user has provided. So uh, to do this, we're just gonna get a little bit more React state for the crop value. And then our image cropper takes in a crop and an on crop change. So we can update that crop every time the user uh, moves the photo. And we can just verify this works if we log crop. Let's go ahead and pop open the console. We'll choose our original photo and uh, we can see every time we let go, we kind of get this new crop value. So that's basically how it works. Seems like everything is wired up. And so now we actually want the user to be able to save the photo. So when they click this save button on click, let's call handle save photo. And this will be async function. And here we basically need to get the cropped image, upload it to S3 and then save it to the current user. So first to get the cropped image, you'll see we have another little helper here called get cropped image. It takes in a data URL, which we have as file data URL. It takes in a crop, which is called crop. It takes in a file name, which we can get from file.name. And it takes an aspect ratio, which is one. So this is going to be our cropped picture. And now this is the really cool part. To upload it to S3, all we need to do is come up to where we're using our S3 upload hook. And we'll see it exposes this upload to S3 function. Upload to S3 takes in a file, which we can pass in our cropped picture. And it's gonna give us back an object with a URL property. Now we see this returns a promise. So this is an async of function we need to await. And also I forgot that this is also an async function. So let's go ahead and await that as well. So uh, let's see if this is all wired up correctly. We'll go ahead and log the URL. And let's come over here, choose a photo. We'll crop it and then we'll hit save. Check this out. If I open this uh, URL in a new tab, we see our image and it is on my S3 bucket. And uh, that's just how easy this library makes it. And we can see it works with the crop too. If I were to do something like this and save it, we'll get another URL. Let's try this one out. And now we can see it's a lot lower. So our, uh, our image cropper is wired up. Upload to S3 is wired up. The last thing we need to do is take this URL and actually persist it to the user account, which is in my Hasura uh, data backend. So uh, let's come down here to the bottom and we'll just paste in the mutation that I need in order to update the user. This is all kind of given to me from Hasura and uh, the avatar URL is the property we're interested on setting uh, on the user right here. And of course we only want this to work for the current user. So we have those permissions in our backend, but if we call this mutation with the current user ID and the avatar URL, uh, we should be good to go. So back up here in the top of our code, we want to use a mutation. This is the update current user mutation that we just wrote down here. 
And this is going to give us an update current user function. So we can use this function here after we get the URL from S3. We're going to await this call. And again, if we look at uh, the mutation here, it takes in a current user ID and an avatar URL. So current user ID and avatar URL. So the avatar URL we have right here from S3. Uh, to get the current user ID, we're going to use our current user hook, which gives us back a current user. And so we can just pass this in just like this. Okay, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and give this a full refresh. We can see I'm already using my kind of new profile picture. Let's see if we can revert it back to the original. I'm gonna choose original. Let's nudge it down a little bit, hit save. Okay, let's hit cancel and uh, look at that. That means it's all wired up. It's showing up uh, on these queries. Let's go ahead and round this out with a little bit of polish. So I'm just gonna grab some new is saving state. Let's set is saving to true right here. And then after we update the current user, let's go ahead and call on close to dismiss our modal. And then uh, we have this kind of fancy button that takes in an is saving prop so that we can animate it uh, while the form is being submitted. And uh, now let's try it one more time. We see that I've got my original photo up here on the home screen and here. Let's go ahead and edit this. Choose my new one. I'm gonna move this over here. Hit save. And uh, look at that. We've got the modal dismissing animating out. And we have our current user query that was being used for this. And over here for this, we'll see they automatically update. And this is basically all these pieces working together really nicely, where uh, the mutation that we're using to update the data in our backend, uh, because it's aware of all of the current live queries, uh, it's going to go ahead and revalidate them as we move around the app and uh, immediately after the mutation happens as well. So I have another video about that. I'll link to the videos for the modal, uh, the rounding out of the app background shrinking, the live queries, um, and the image cropper because those are all the pieces we used here. But uh, I, I'm still kind of blown away by how easy the SWR revalidation pattern makes it. You know, I didn't have to know anywhere in this app that anything about the avatar URL, URL had changed. And uh, even after I got this working, I had Ryan use it. He changed his uh, avatar using the same feature. And I had my phone open and uh, eventually just updated. It was actually really quick. And uh, it's just nice because we built this feature in isolation right here. All the code that we wrote is right here in this picture form. It's doing a mutation, it's uploading to S3, and uh, the rest of the app it is basically reactive to it just because of how that revalidation pattern works. So I was really happy with building this feature. It took me like a little over maybe an hour and a half, two hours end to end. And um, it's a lot of fun when you have all these pieces wired up. I didn't have to configure anything in, in Amazon. I didn't have to deal with auth. I have it linked so that you can only change your own avatar based on some permissions I added in Hasura. And um, the modal looks great on the phone as well. When you use it, it feels very natural, feels very nice. All the animations work. So uh, yeah, I had a blast building this and it was fun to see some of the tech that I had worked on in my last couple of videos really come together. So hope you enjoyed that as well. Again, check the description for links to all the videos for all these different pieces. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.